and welcome to our information session, our first one for the fiscal year of 2019 for our annual program statement for Public Diplomacy Small Grants. My name is Jennifer Klarman. I'm one of the cultural attaches here at U.S. Embassy Jerusalem, Tel Aviv branch office, and I want to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, today we are joined by an excellent panel, a team of experts. I don't know, between all of you together, how many years of experience are we talking about at the embassy? <laughs> like close to 100 maybe? maybe all together. A uh, maybe a little bit more, yes. <laughs> These folks are the experts. I'm sort of here just as the ringleader. I've only been here for about three months um, at the cultural section, but these folks have been here a lot longer, so they're going to answer your questions today. And the overwhelming majority of our time today will be spent on your questions. I assume that all of you have already read the annual program statement. I hope you have. If not, what we are going to do is we're going to go through it page by page, all 12 pages, but I'm going to skip through a lot of it. I'm just going to highlight some parts, and then afterwards we're going to answer your questions. So first, I want to introduce you to our panel. I'm going to actually allow them to introduce themselves and explain to you why they're here, how long they've been here, and also, reminder to turn off your phones, by the way, and also to, um, to tell you exactly what their field of expertise is here at the embassy. So let's get started with Manal. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Manal Haddad. I'm part of the public diplomacy team here, and I've been working at the embassy for a uh, good few years. And um, my portfolio includes working on, uh, if you heard about the MEPI program, it's another uh, grant uh, mechanism that we have here, working on the Arab community uh, in Israel and also uh, some rule of law programming. And I'm looking forward to hear from you soon. Absolutely, absolutely, I will. Okay. I think she means you guys. Uh, Speak uh, up uh, a little bit, yes. My name is Risa Levy. I work uh, in the uh, cultural office, public affairs. I've been working in the embassy since uh, 1994, um, working on grants, small grants as well as larger grants, but today we're here for the small grants program. I cover the English language portfolio, which means we don't teach English, however we use English as a tool in order to bridge communities, bring people together, uh, do outreach into minority groups, diverse communities, using the skills of negotiation, debating, model UN, teaching American values and culture and arts and uh, working for towards economic enrichment and empowerment by uh, giving students an opportunity to get an, a book written English and go on to higher education. Thank you, Risa. Hi, good morning, Ellen Schnitzer, US Embassy. I've been with the Embassy for the last 19 years, um, dealing with um, the issues of science and technology education, women's empowerment, outreach to Russian-speaking immigrants, we do a lot in these areas. We also work um, in the area of innovation, entrepreneurship. We work a lot with economic section to promote economic development of the um, populations that we work with. We work a lot with the Israeli Arab community, Russian speakers, Ethiopian community, all over the country. Thank Veronique. you, Alan. Thank you. Veronique. Hi, Veronique Verber. I'm a grant specialist for this section, public diplomacy. I've been working here for the last 23 years. Um, I'm responsible for all financial and business matters related to the grants, not only for this uh, call for proposal, but also for conflict management and mitigation grants managed by our section. And also I review all the proposals before being finalized. Thank you. Okay, so all of you have our annual program statement. We'll go through it page by page. Hello, welcome. Starting with page one, and again, I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read all of it. Um, we're just going to highlight a few paragraphs. Okay. So uh, first of all, the amount for each award on page one, generally up to a maximum of twenty-five thousand dollars. And panel, at any point, if you want to interrupt or add something, please do. Okay. Uh, basically, what this means is it's up to you to make the proposal to see what your budget is and let us know how much you're asking for. <coughs> it is generally up to a maximum of 25 that we allow, but that says generally, which means there are exceptions. Also, we reserve the right, of course, if you make a proposal and you ask for, let's say, 45, we might come back to you and say, okay, we think another number is more appropriate. Um, also, I want to highlight here the purpose of our PD Small Grants Program. So the whole point of us being here at the U.S. Embassy is to strengthen cultural ties between the U.S. and Israel. So all of your proposals must keep this in mind 
as a broad statement. And also, it must include an American cultural element. We're going to go through that part on page four. You might have some questions about that if you do hold it to the end, but we'll go through it in a little bit more detail on page four. Also, our mission priorities are very important, and it, it, it touches everything that we do here at the embassy. So number one, to foster conditions more conducive to a lasting peace, to deepen U.S.-Israel economic ties and open doors of economic opportunity, and number three, to foster Israeli understanding of U.S. policy. If your proposals can touch on all three, <coughs> that is fantastic. If they don't, that's okay too. But of course, the more you can touch on, the stronger the proposal will be. All right, that's page one. We're going to go to page two, and actually I'm going to skip over page two because it's very detailed, and this is something that you really just have to read. Welcome. Our priority program areas and our target audiences, that's pretty clear. If you have questions about that, we will discuss it later, but I don't want to go through all of it. I do want to go to page three to talk about our program partners because partnerships are very much encouraged under this annual program statement, though it's not absolutely necessary. But we do look for proposals that have a partnership element to it and a cost sharing element to it that will be later on in the APS. I do want to highlight though on page three the type of projects that are not eligible for funding and the reason why I want to read every single one is because I don't want to waste your time. So if any of your proposals have any part of this in it as a project we cannot fund it, we're not permitted to. So projects relating to partisan political activities charitable development or social welfare activities, construction projects, projects that support specific religious activities or promote only one faith or religion. Interfaith is great, but one is not. Fundraising campaigns, lobbying for specific legislation, policies or projects, academic research and projects that are intended only for the growth of, or institutional development of your, um, of your proposals and your programs. Page three, the rest of it is repetitive from the beginning, so I'm going to skip to page four. And on page four, I briefly mentioned uh, cost sharing and partnerships. I think I'm gonna allow our panel at the end to discuss if you have any questions regarding cost sharing, the type of programs that we've seen in the past that have been successful that have cost sharing or matching as an element in them. Also, uh, on this page, something that's very important because this has been a practice in the past and we're really trying to discourage this so we have three cycles for this proposal I'm going to go into more detail on the cycles on page 8 but we ask you if you have more than one proposal to only submit one per cycle because if you end up submitting more than one we're only going to look at one and we're going to choose it at random we're not going to go through the entirety of both so it's to your benefit to pick your strongest one only one per cycle and keep in mind that we may have money at the end or we may not for anything else that you might have for another cycle. Uh, unfortunately, when it comes to um, funding, we don't always know if we're gonna have funding throughout the entire cycle, but fingers crossed always. So that's page four. And also back to the American component. So this comes up as a question a lot. Um, one thing to take away from today that's really important is our email address, which is in the APS. So if you do have any questions, uh, you can always ask us later because we're going to end promptly at 12 after the questions today, but you can always email us. So the email address is, I think it's uh, in the APS a few times, so you'll have it there for you to take home. But so an American component, it's required, but it's also a very broad de definition. So it uh, it's, could be an American citizen, for example, who's an expert, a speaker, an artist, an athlete, that's one example. It could be an American cultural product, such as um, book or music or curricula or film, something that you might be including in your proposal. And also it could be something that just engages your audiences in something that is considered typically American and touches upon American policy. So US history, American values, um, and American social models. That's the American component. We're gonna move to page I'm going to skip actually page five because this is something that we personally can't touch. Um, these are the requirements. They're outlined um, very specifically on exactly what the content of your application should be. And there are all the links there as well for all the required forms. If you have questions on this, you're more than welcome to ask them at the end of this Q&A or at the end of my session. Um, but I'm going to skip it because it's all quite clear in here for you. Hi, welcome. So page five, I'm gonna skip. Um, page six and seven as well. 
Um, I take that back, actually. I'm going to go to page 7. So uh, this is one of those requirements that um, can be a headache, and I apologize for that, but we have no say in this matter, and I anticipate you're going to have some questions about this today. But there are three specific required registrations in order to be eligible to receive money from the U.S. government. The first one is a DUNS number, the second one is NCAGE, and the third one is SAM. So we have links on our APS that will go directly to all these websites to get you started. We recommend that if you plan on submitting a proposal, you get started on this right away. Because especially for SAM's registration, that can take quite a bit of time. That's why we also recommend if you have a project in mind to apply for the grant three to six months ahead of time to allow you for some time to get all these three taken care of because unfortunately it does take time. The process can be complicated, but we are here for you to answer your questions, okay? And also on these websites, they also can give you some help. Their phone numbers if you need help from outside the U.S. and also their websites have a lot of... Uh, information on them as well. So those are three untouchables. Those are required. I apologize for that. This is uh, back to what we were talking about with the cycle. So this is on page eight. And this is what we, I asked you to keep in mind for your proposals if you have more than one to make sure you only submit one per cycle. This explains exactly when we are going to look at your proposals, exactly when we'll review them, and exactly when we'll get back to you. Um, we like to retain some flexibility as much as possible because of unforeseen circumstances with these cycles, but for the most part, we are going to do our best to stick by them. So you will get an answer regarding your proposal by the dates that we have outlined in these cycles. Uh, there is the email address, telavivgrants at state.gov. Please, that's the one thing that we want you to take away from today. I'm going to go right to page 9 now to the review and selection process and just say, very briefly, if your proposal is under $10,000, we review it internally here at the Public Diplomacy section. If your proposal is more, we are going to have a grants committee that comes together from all over the embassy to review your projects, okay? Just for the sake of clarity and transparency, we want you all to know that. And now I am going to Skip the rest because it is all very much uh, outlined for you very specifically and also untouchables that I don't think require too much explanation. Um, and I'm going to go right to your questions. So I leave it open to you and to our panel of experts. So I'm going to repeat your question for the sake of the folks watching on our live stream. Um, but go ahead, anyone that's interested, please. Okay. All right, I need you to repeat that question again, and if any of you understood that, please okay. jump in. But I, I don't think I understood it. I'm saying if you receive the grant, let's say in January, okay. when you receive five, you want to start it in October because it matches up with your activities. Uh, as it starts after October 1st, 2018, can you apply this retroactively? So you're applying retroactively for no. like money. No. Okay, the answer is, no. the simple answer is no. no. Yeah. So um, for those watching at home or at work, uh, if any money that you spend prior to the grant being um, approved, you cannot, we will not cover those expenses. Thank you. Yes? Okay, the question is, can you apply if you're already in the process of conducting a USAID project? Yes, you can, as long as it's not, you know, the same project and it's not double dipping with, you know, the same amount. Mm. And I, I will add to that as well. I think it's important on your proposal to, to outline that, yeah. that you are currently, you know, yeah. um, uh, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, you have to. You could currently everything. have a grant with USA, just so we know what kind of money is being spent on your institution organization, even if it's not connected to the program. Next question. Yes, go ahead. Um, does the size and experience of the organization impact the chance of success in these smaller grants? Okay, size and experience of an organization does that uh, impact the chance of success? Of course, we look for sustainability. Yeah. In that way, not the opposite way. It can be a small organization, but it has to be a sustainable project. 
the main thing is that the organization have the capacity, whether it's a small or a large organization, the most important thing that it has a capacity to conduct and there's a commitment, the people around it. So that's what we will look at. It's not necessarily it's a small, we, we, we don't give it, or it's a large, we, we give it funding. It's about the capacity. This, this touches on cost sharing as well and partnerships. So we look at sustainability. So is this project a one-off or is it something that we see that can continue over the course of many, many years? We will favor a proposal that looks like it's more sustainable. Thank you. Go ahead. Could you apply for um, an developing an, uh, an existing project? Because we have a project that was supported by you. We want to expand that. We need money towards building more content. Is that something you can apply for? An existing program. But not to redo it, but expand it. Expand the context of it. I'm going to ask you to hold on to that question because I want to take a, a brief moment to introduce all of you to the head of our section, our public affairs officer, Terry Davidson, who has some welcome remarks. So thank you for coming, Terry. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Terry, Terry, hold on. Hold on, sorry. He's got to plug me in. <laughs> Technical issues. All right. We're good? Good morning, everyone. I apologize for being late. Uh, we have a, a morning meeting every uh, Monday, and we went longer today. Uh, Ambassador Friedman was in a talkative mood, so we, we, we had a, a good talk about uh, a number of issues, including the very issues that you're focused on, uh, the, the issues of bringing Americans and Israelis together and bringing different sectors of Israel together uh, really is all part of the, uh, uh, the process for uh, a search for, for, for lasting peace in this region, uh, which is our, you know, within our APS, uh, it's all there. Um, uh, we uh, count on your bright ideas, your, your creativity uh, to come up with new things that we want to fund. Uh, we, in the past, I've been doing this business for about 30 years, uh, and in 30 years, the, uh, the, this kind of document has really developed. Um, in the past, we just kind of looked at ideas and we liked them and we, we funded them. Uh, that's no longer accepted in, in the U.S. Uh, grants uh, business. Uh, essentially, they want all of our activities tied to our strategic priorities. Uh, and that's essentially what the APS does. It essentially gives us a roadmap that says, these are the things that we want to do, and these are the things we want to do together with uh, partners uh, in Israel. And so uh, we rely a great deal on your um, uh, creativity, your new ideas. Um, and the more that you understand this document and the more that you get from our, our experts, uh, the better you will be at crafting uh, proposals. Um, and uh, this is a core activity for, for our programs. Uh, we, within the public diplomacy section, we also do our press outreach. Uh, we work on speeches. Uh, we do the websites. Uh, we do programming. Uh, in exchange programs, uh, Fulbrights, uh, all the kinds of ways that bring Israelis and, and Americans uh, in contact uh, and in communication with one another. Uh, but um, a lot of the work that we do in our core issues uh, happens uh, via grants. Uh, and uh, uh, those of you, I think I, I see a lot of familiar faces. I know a lot of you uh, are not first timers uh, at this. Uh, whether this is your first time or your 10th time, uh, we really do rely on you, uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, answering the questions that we can answer. Uh, the team here is uh, all prepared, and uh, you know, I just wanted to thank you for your investment in the relationship, um, and um, I look forward to uh, coming out and seeing your projects as they move forward, get funded, and turn into uh, real uh, contacts uh, between uh, this vibrant society and, and America. So thank you very much. One second for a mic switch, and then I'll ask you to ask the question again, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you for letting us know. I'm sure the boys can hear us in the back. The stream is not working. Um, all right, so can you go ahead and, uh, by the way, um, I guess I should let you all know too that the video will be available on our website also. So for those, if someone's freaking out right now, the stream is not working, let them know that we're going to have the entire video on our website after the fact, after we edit it, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, one more time. So my question was, can we apply for a grant that is aimed to be used to developing a new 
new part for an existing, to widen or expand an existing project in terms of content? Yes. Okay, so the question no, was, if you, have an existing, if you have an existing project, can you apply for a grant to develop the project? The answer is yes. It's the develop of the organization that we can't fund. But the project itself, yes, right? Okay. Next question. Yes, in the back. Uh, do you mean project going to be cross border or just within Israel? Israel? No, the project itself is going to happen in, in Israel, Israel, but the team facilitating Palestinians from the West Bank, you mean, that yes. are happening here? Yes. Our beneficiary should be Israeli citizens. So if the experts happen to be someone else, that's going to be reviewed if they're, you know, uh, appropriate for the project. But the most, most important thing is the beneficiaries. The beneficiaries are within Israel, then that's, you know, qualified. And actually, this brings up a great point. Um, in the APS on page 8, under the section that says funding. So in the past, you were able to fund, fund projects, projects and cooperate with the Israelis and Palestinians, Palestinians living in East Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Gaza. Now that's going to be, um, we are going to have, uh, in December, we're going to release a new notice of funding for the new fiscal year that's in coordination with the Consulate General in Jerusalem and the U.S. Embassy Jerusalem that will touch upon those projects. So look, if that's what you're interested in, look on our website in December for an announcement of a new cooperation between us and the Consulate General for projects that touch upon that, okay? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Training staff in training of a trainer, I say you right here, in a democratic value in anti-racism can apply to American values as well? Anti-racism, yes, absolutely, that is an American value. Yes, so absolutely. I didn't hear the first one. That is considered democratic values, absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay, so the question is about mission priorities, and if you touch upon three out of the three from page one, or two out of the three and one out of the three, do you get a leg up? Only if all things are equal. So not necessarily. I'm talking about if you're comparing two identical projects that look both great, one might have be touching upon three out of the three, one one out of the three. Chances are the one with three out of the three is going to win. But do you guys want to weigh in on that? I know we had that discussion prior amongst ourselves, so... Yeah, but uh, Jennifer, as you said, uh, all things being equal, right. that would take place. But, uh, you know, as we review pro uh, projects on an individual basis, as long as you are, are sort of uh, hitting one mission goal within and most your project. Importantly, don't I mean, try to touch upon yeah. three of them just for the sake of, yeah, like, don't expand it. If it, yeah. if it makes sense, if, Do it, that, you know, yeah. if not, then just understand. focus on one, one mission priority and uh, yeah. present it the best way you can. Okay. So the question is regarding if you have a MEPI program that you want to apply for, it doesn't stop you from applying for this grant. No, you can apply separately as long as you're not applying for the same program. And the third question, if we have a project that we're developing now in the organization that concerns women empowerment throughout you know, the world, but has American values and shared, uh, you know, a shared society in, within Israel that reflects upon the shared society that the U.S. has, is that something that can be So you're asking if women empowerment falls under like the American values and American component? The answer is certainly, I'll, ask, I'll allow our women empowerment expert to answer, but. <laughs> women empowerment, yes. And as Manal mentioned, it depends who the beneficiaries are. If the beneficiaries are in Israel, yes. If it's only a component, like, you know, you have, for, you know, beneficiaries in Israel and from, you know, international ones, our interest would be only in those, you know, maybe we can maybe partially support or something, but we won't be supporting your international participants. No, no, it's, it's Israeli participants, but the, the money 
Oh. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sir. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, just to get a clarification. Um, there was an article in the Times of Israel a couple of weeks ago about a certain fund um, being stopped or this being the final year of the fund. And I don't know what that relates to, if it relates to this, if it relates to US aid. I'm quite confused. Well, so I think Without reading the article, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, so no. Uh, I actually, actually, maybe I, I can answer. Uh, what you saw, I think, that was related to the Economic Support Fund, and uh, public diplomacy funding is not part of it. Okay. So this is not related. Okay. Um, I also want to ask. Um, I see over here um, the P2P and OFO, which is on consular. And I, you touched upon it beforehand, and I was thinking to expand upon just the differences between that and this. Okay. Uh, Manal, did you want to talk about the difference between us and the NOFO? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're, you're asking for more clarification on the difference between the PD Small Grant Annual Program Statement and the notice of funding that will come out in December mm -hmm. that is a basically joint. joint venture between U.S. Embassy Jerusalem and the Consulate General. So what we're having today is public diplomacy programs within Israel for Israeli beneficiaries only. And that's what we're discussing today. The one that's going to be published in December is what we call cross-border. And uh, basically it's going to be a joint program administrated by the embassy and the consulate in Jerusalem. And the focus will be on cross-border uh, activities, the uh, Palestinian Israelis from, the, from, from across the border, uh, East Jerusalem, West Jerusalem. These are the type of projects that usually fall under the uh, uh, P2P uh, programs. And just one very final question. Sorry about that. I'm talking too much. It's okay. Um, the, um, when it speaks about American values, it's so broad. And does it need to have an explicit American component, like an American lecture or American content? Or does um, socioeconomic mobility count as an American value? Or gender? you mentioned gender equality counts as an American value, but um, would it have to have explicitly an American component or socioeconomic mobility also could that come under that category in a broad manner? I believe the answer is both, but I'm going to defer <laughs> to the panel as well. Well, you answered the question, okay. I think. Just want to make Jennifer. sure. Yes. <laughs> I mean, basically, as long as you are, you know, hitting a value, it can be broad and it can be specific. Thank you. Just to say something in addition, it makes it stronger when you have an American component. If you bring in a lecturer, if you are copying an American model, if you have something which comes directly from the United States, it would make your proposal stronger. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Wow, okay, sir. If you're a for-profit, so the answer, the question is who's eligible? If you're a non-for-profit, we'll let Veronique answer. Excuse me, what was the question? Whether or not, if they are a private company, right? You're asking if you're a private company, if you can apply. Okay, I'm sorry, but for-profit organization, you cannot apply. If we have a project that has cooperation with local authority or With a local authority? Local authority. What kind of local authority? Municipality, yes. Yes. Oh. yes. I'm glad we didn't waste your but, time. But today. They, they, they would be the beneficiary, not your organization. The, the municipality would be the beneficiary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they have to apply, or the organization can apply? The one who is going to apply is going to, to be the municipality, and again, if they are registered as an amuta. Answer the question? Okay. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am? Actually, that's a great question. So if you've already applied for a grant and you're in the process right now, and the grant will not end until while the, during this cycle, okay, during this cycle, can you still apply? Does that make so? So basically, for, she has for the same proposal for follow-up. Follow-up. For follow-up, sure. 
But Absolutely. usually it's good that you, at least, you know, especially if it's the first time you're doing a project with us, okay. it's good to give time to actually, you know, see the impact of the project, see how things are going, rather than we continue chipping money to something that is not, you know, uh, still uh, on, on a under implementation. Mm -hmm. So it's usually recommended, you know, apply per project, you know, don't just add money to a project that's going, but rather let us see the impact and the result and how it's going. Uh, before you apply again to you know supplement usually you could think of that towards the end of your project if you already have results you have some impact to show and you want to continue rather than applying again maybe you can add something we, we call it you know cost extension that's going to be discussed with the grant officer but uh, not just again applying so you can make sure that you have money uh, continuing usually that's not very common and to expand on that so on page 11 there is a reporting requirement so we do want to see the result of the project. So that's why Manal said that it would be better for you to wait so that we can actually be able to vet that, okay, this was a project worth funding, that this is a good a way to spend American taxpayer dollars. So that's why you might want to wait before you apply for a new grant, okay? Can I just add something Please. to that? Um, obviously, your reporting is uh, imperative. I mean, your narrative reporting in order for us to evaluate and assess how impactful and uh, how the grant was carried out. But I would also recommend that you take note uh, um, with whom you're working at the embassy and ensure that that person or persons are invited to events and uh, attractions within the grant so they can see firsthand as to what is taking place. So there's a physical component to it, the actual seeing of the grant, and there's also the written, com written component. But uh, the impact of the grant will obviously affect future um, you know, uh, grants and uh, our assessment of future programs with that organization. And that's part of our responsibility on this side, especially myself as a grants officer, to come out and see your projects and see how it's going and make sure that we are spending U.S. taxpayer dollars the way it should be. So you want to definitely include that into your proposal, um, exactly the type of events that you think would be appropriate for us to come out and, and visit. Yes, sir. So first, I wanted to introduce myself, and we're all kind of partners. So my name is Benji. I'm from the Leo Beck Educational Center in Haifa. Um, so Ellen, I wanted to thank you for the clarification about the weight of the American component. Um, second question is, is, is there any kind of a preference in terms of the percentage of overall funding of the project that the um, U.S. Embassy grant is? In other words, I assume you wouldn't be willing to take a proposal that the, you're, at, you're asked to be 100% funder. And or is there a point where the request is so small percentage of funding that it also, I mean, and there are funders who actually specify from a percentage point of view where they like to be in terms of their weight of funding in the whole project. So, Veronique, I, I know you're going to answer that. Actually, the can amount you, of Veronique, can you repeat some of the question before you answer? Okay. Um, your question was if the, there is an impact on the, where the funding is going and how much the organization is uh, ready to participate in. Or other funding sources. Or, or other funding sources. Your part the entire part. Th this is important. However, what is more important is your program, your project, and what you want to do. Funding is considered afterwards. First is the project. And we work with you on budget proposals, too. I, I had mentioned earlier on that if you ask for X amount of dollars, we might come back to you and say we think something else is, is appropriate. Have we ever? I think we have also. Someone might ask for, let's say, 25, and we think 35 is appropriate, although that might be a little bit rare. But that happens as well. <laughs> like, here, here here's yes, more money. Yes, you actually. You fund a project that you're asked to be the sole fund. Yes, yes. Actu actually, well, Jennifer, this is a good point. Yeah. Jennifer, this is a good point, because for some project, we can see that if an organization is asking for 25 and we see that the project is 100 or 200,000, then we ask the question, who is going to fund the rest? Mm -hmm. So all, all these factors must be submitted with the proposal. Benji, can I, I'll just add a little bit to that just to, to make sure that uh, there's clarity. Uh, we often are the sole supporters of projects. We obviously encourage uh, partnerships and cost share because it makes it more sustainable. At the end of the day, if we run out of money or there's no funding, what happens to that project? So we would take that into consideration. But many of the small grants are funded solely by the U.S. Embassy, and sometimes not. When you ask about a very small percentage of a program, that's fine. Sometimes we just want to be, or the organization would like the U.S. Uh, embassy to be a part of the program, even in a small way, just so there's some branding and there's some affiliation with the embassy. I know that a lot of organizations uh, chip into that little partnership in order to encourage other partners for Koshi. 
So sometimes it's good to have the embassy within a project to, uh, you know, for you to get more funders on, on board. And speaking of branding, that is really important mm -hmm. to us. So in your proposal, and it is outlined in the APS, we want the public to know that we were giving you, we gave you a grant, so we need branding. So um, whether it's the U.S. flag, whether it's tagging us on social media, come up in your proposal with some social media proposals, some plans that show us that you are going to have the U.S. Embassy out there as a, an obvious sponsor of your project. I just want to add another point regarding partnership. Partnership is not necessarily just cost sharing, uh, money, you know, uh, uh, addition. Partnership is encouraged also when you're doing a project, for example, in a certain town, to do some partnership with the local community, with the community center, with the local authorities, because that adds a lot to the, you know, impact of the project and also future sustainability. So when you're building your project, you know, there are many great projects uh, uh, that have been submitted, but they're like, you know, isolated uh, here and there. What we really like to do, what we really like to see is partnership also with other NGOs you know uh, sometimes you don't have to reinvent the wheel to do some activities while there's an NGO that exists and does it so think uh, in this kind of uh, uh, partnership so you can uh, strengthen your your project and also I'll just add to that sorry one more thing when you speak about cost share it can also be in kind not yes. necessarily mon money as uh, Manal said there may be a venue there may be you know I don't know, supplies that are given etc etc you definitely in kind is also uh, totally recommended Yes. And then I'll come to you in the back. Yes. In kind activity of, of uh, the organization, uh, people can be part of the, <coughs> of the, uh, sorry, of the participation, uh, money participation of the organization. Did I, I, I didn't think I understood that question. If, okay, I will repeat the question. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're asking if in kind activities can be considered volunteer activities volunteer within the organization can be count of the money the value of money participation of the organization yeah. mm -hmm. so the question is if volunteers hours f from volunteers can be considered as in kind funding for a project the, uh, the response is yes okay thank you thank you sir. yes thank you to Mm -hmm. um, will the process be similar? Will the, the standards and the values the projects have to live up to be the same ones as for this uh, grant? It's a similar project because I don't have, I mean, process. I don't have it in front of me. I can't answer completely intelligently on it, but the process is similar. I don't know that they're doing the same cycles that we're doing, and um, I know that a big component of the project will be mentoring. That's about all I can say. So look for it in December because I don't know off the top of my head exactly what the process will be. If anyone has anything to add, no, by all means. Said, and they're going to hold also information sessions yeah. usually, mm -hmm. so you will get to That's hear directly. Yeah. That's the P2P, the NOFO, yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. No, no, they're set. No, they they have their own separate PD funding for small grants. Is that, separate is that posts. Yeah. I think just There's a public to diplomacy within the embassy and public diplomacy within the consulate. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't absorbed into this. No. Membership. More money. More money for everyone. Good. Does anybody want to add anything from the panel? Uh, I'm sure that Carmela, you would like to, to say a few words. No, sorry. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Is there an option? you your submission before you submit it to to understand if there's any you know uh, uh, things which are missing from it or so generally speaking this is a competition so we aren't supposed to preview to offer you advice on where you stand in the competition but maybe someone on the panel would like to add anything to that in terms of how you work with our um, potential grantees you could use the email that we, uh, we uh, you know, and just send your inquiries just to have more clarifications, but not, of course, reviewing a proposal yeah. totally from, you know, uh, so we can, that usually helps just to clarify what actually uh, falls under the EPS and what doesn't, and then you can uh, have a better picture on how to apply. And in addition to that, just to clarify, grants is our tool to work with you people. It's our, it's, it's something that we use to promote cooperation between the entities. 
so we do want to cooperate sometimes we have an opportunity to give a grant sometimes we don't have an opportunity to give a grant but we can bring a speaker and there are many ways of uh, cooperating with us so just uh, work with us and uh, we we'll look forward to it. Yeah, and, and we encourage you to, to look at our website because there might be other opportunities, yeah. exactly, besides just this PD small grant uh, annual program statement opportunity. So please, by all means, uh, look at the site, share it with your contacts because we are here to work with you in, in any way we can. Yes, ma'am. Manal? No, I mean, MEPI is different, than, the, the goals of MEPI are different than the goals of public diplomacy, so that doesn't really fall. <coughs> you have to apply separately and according to, you know, to the uh, uh, priorities of each uh, program, and each, ro each year it changes. I saw one other hand. Yes. I, I just want to say, I think I have a very specific question that I would like to hold everyone, so I'd just appreciate if you could stay longer for a couple minutes. Well, it looks like we're going to wrap up earlier than so I think all of us are more than happy to stay to take one-on-one -on -one questions with, with, with you folks, but with as much as possible because we are live streaming at home and this question might be something that someone else at home has too, I'd encourage you to, to ask unless you feel really weird about it. But I would encourage you to ask. Okay, okay. I'm not going to force you, but I would encourage. So we can wrap up. Yeah? Okay. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody.